हायर हितेश रयानी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट एमजे इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी दिस इज लेक्चर 21 कंपाउंड सिलिंड्रिकल सेल द लर्निंग आउटकम्स ऑफ दिस लेक्चर इज टू लर्न द कंपाउंड सिलिंड्रिकल सेल एंड एनक्लोजर्स सो in this lectures we learn the compound cylindrical cells and the design of enclosures now consider the compound cylindrical cells so uh, according to lamps equations if you seen uh, in previous lectures according to the lamps equations the thickness of hole for cylindrical cell is uh, t is equal to r i into under root sigma t plus e divided by sigma t minus p minus 1 here sigma t is the available stress and uh, p is the internal pressure applied on cylinder in cylinder so in this uh, equation according to lamps equation say uh, this is the thickness of cylindrical cell and in this equation say p greater than or equal to sigma t at that time no thickness will prevent the failure of the cylinder so to uh, to avoid or to overcome the difficulty of this uh, there are two methods first is by compounding compound cylindrical cells and second is by using the theory of plasticity so this uh, two methods we can overcome the difficulty when the condition is sigma when the condition is p greater than or equal to sigma t so consider the first method by using the compound cylindrical cell so as shown in figure here here are the compound cylindrical cells and there are outer cylinders and inner cylinders and this both cylinder is compounded compound by the uh, shrinkage fit so you can see in uh, cross sections of this compound cylindrical cell there are uh, the pink has cylinders uh, is so outer cylinders and blue has cylinder is the inner cylinders and these both cylinders are compound by the shrinkage fit so let us consider the stresses in compound cylindrical cells so as you know now the compound cylinder is applied when the p greater than or equal to sigma t so stresses in compound cylindrical cells so consider a compound cylindrical cell and here the ri is the inner radius of the inner cylinders and r2 is the outer radius of the inner cylinders and r3 is equal to outer radius of the outer cylinders and these both uh, cylinders are compounded so according to this compound cylindrical conditions if you see there are uh, these both cylinders are shrinkage fit so due to this shrinkage fit there are the pressure exerted on inner cylinders and <coughs> outer cylinder so if we consider the inner cylinders <coughs> sorry <coughs> so if we consider the inner cylinders uh, you can see there are p is applied external force p is applied on the outer surface of the inner cylinders and uh, you can see that the stress distributions in inner cylinders there are compressive stress distributions you can see in the figures and if you see the outer cylinder conditions the outer cylinder condition uh, the pressure p is applied at the inner radius of the outer cylinders and uh, due to this pressure the stress distributions in outer cylinder is the tensile stress and you can see the distribution of stress throughout the thickness of outer cylinder that is the tensile stress distributions and if you consider the conditions of this compound cylinder subjected to internal pressures so if you see that figure d shows the tangential stress distributions due to uh, 
uh, sinkage fluid and internal pressure. Here, the PI, that is internal pressure, is applied at the inner surface of the internal cylinders. And the RI is the radius of internal radius of inner cylinder, R2 is the outer radius of inner cylinders and R3 is equal to outer radius of the outer cylinders. And if you see the stress distribution due to the shrinkage fit, there are compressive stress distributions in inner cylinders and tangential stress distributions in outer cylinders and also subjected to pressure PI at the inner radius or at the inside of the cylinder. So, if you consider these conditions uh, and uh, uh, resultant stress distributions throughout this cylinder, so there are uh, figure E shows the resultant stress distributions in this compound cylindrical cells. And you can see that the resultant compound cylindrical cells uh, resultant stress distributions throughout the compound cylindrical cell in internal uh, cylinders and outer cylinders both are the tensile. So you can see in this uh, figure E. Now, uh, stresses uh, resulting uh, in these uh, conditions due to the internal pressures. So we can use the Lenz equations that is sigma t that is pi into ri square minus po into ro square divided by ro square minus ri square plus ri square into ro square divided by x square into pi minus po divided by ro square minus ri square. So and uh, according to the Lenz equations the radial stress that is sigma r is equal to pi into ri square minus po into ro square divided by ro square minus ri square minus ri square into ro square divided by x square into pi minus po divided by ro square minus ri square. So these are uh, equations we have to use in compounding cylinder, compound cylinder also. So here sigma t is the tangential stress distribution, tangential stress and sigma r is the radial stress and uh, here x shows the any radius in a particular sections. So consider only the external pressure uh, applied in cylinder. So if we consider only external pressure, we have to apply the boundary condition that is pi is equal to zero. So if we place the boundary conditions pi is equal to zero, the equations of sigma t that is the tangential stress subjected to external pressure only, it becomes sigma t is equal to minus PO into RO square divided by RO square minus RI square into 1 plus RI square divided by X square. And if we see uh, the radial stress according to the condition pi is equal to 0 then uh, sigma r becomes minus po into ro square divided by ro square minus ri square into 1 minus ri square divided by x square. So this is the tangential stress and radial stress according to the condition that is pi is equal to 0. Now uh, if you see uh, the tangential stress according to Lamb's equation is like this and radial stress according to Lamb's equation is like this. Now we have to uh, apply these equations for the only internal pressure is applied. So consider the in, uh, internal pressure only. At that time the boundary condition is P O is equal to C. So we have to place the P O that is the external pressure is equal to C O. So the sigma T becomes is equal to sigma T is equal to P I into R I square divided by R O square minus R I square into 1 plus R O square divided by X square. 
and for this uh, conditions that is P O is equal to zero, sigma R becomes like P I into R I square upon R O square minus R I square into one minus R O square divided by X square. So this is the tangential stress and radial stress according to only internal pressure. Now, now consider next point is the cylinder head and cover plates. Now we will see the design of the cylindrical cells, spherical cells, etc. Now we have to uh, switch on to the cylinder heads and cover plates. So uh, the head of pressure vessels may have flat plates or slightly this flat. And the design of these heads depends upon the following two factors. First factor is the types of connections between the head and the cylindrical pole. So which type of connections is between cylindrical pole and the end that is uh, considered why we have to design the head of pressure vessels. And second condition to design the head is nature of loading. Which type of load is applied that is either uniform uh, distributions or uh, concentrate load. So according to these two factors that is nature of loadings and type of connections between head and cylinders all we have to design the head of pressure vessel. So consider uh, the first case is the circular plate, circular plate plate with uniform distributed load. Here the plate is circular and the loading condition is the uniform distributed load and for that the T1 is equal to K1 into D into under root P divided by sigma T. Here sigma T is the allowable design stress, P is the pressure applied on cylinder cylinders and D is the diameter of cylinder, uh, cylinder uh, diameter of circumferential joint at cylinder pole and head. Here in this case uh, K1 is the factor according to the circular plate and uniform distributed load. So value of K1 you have to take from these tables and if you see these tables you can visualize that the K1, K2, K3 and K4, there are different factors according to the uh, geometry of these particular heads. So here our, in our case, the head is the circular flat plate. So according to circular plate, we have to find the K1. And to calculate the K1, we need uh, first the material of uh, a cover plate or heads and the types of connections. So there are uh, materials, cast iron and steel and uh, types of connection really supported in this. So whatever the conditions is given to design the head, you have to take the value of K1 according to uh, these tables. Now second is the rectangular plate. Uh, with uniform distributed load and for this uh, T1 is equal to A into B into K2 into under root P divided by sigma T into A square plus B square. Here A is the length of the plate and B is the width of the plate and P is the pressure, sigma T is allowable design, uh, design stress and uh, to calculate the thickness of this rectangular flat flat subjected to uniform distributed load you need the value of factor K2 and for that you have to use uh, these tables and K2 you can find from material that is material of flats and types of connections. Third case is uh, the elliptical plate with uniform load, uniform distributed load 
and this case the t1 is equal to a into b into k4 into under root p divided by sigma t into a square plus b square in this conditions uh, here small a and small b are the uh, major and minor axis respectively and here you have to take the value of k4 for the electrical plate according to the material of this plate and types of connections uh, so you can use this table to calculate the value of k4 now next is next case is the dish head with uniform distributed load at that time t1 is equal to 4.16 into p into r divided by sigma u sigma u is the ultimate tensile strength so here p is the pressure inside the cylinders r is the inside radius of curvature of the plate and sigma u is the ultimate tensile strength for the material of plate and uh, for this uh, cylindrical cell whenever you have to need the value of factor k1 k2 k3 k4 etc you have to use this table to calculate the whole factors so in these lectures we learn the compound cylindrical cells and the end conditions or design of uh, end according to the different criteria so thank you Thank <laughs> you.